We will now talk about what is perhaps the most overlooked part of any PC build and that is the power supply. Most people leave this till the end. When they have exhausted all of their budget, they end up buying the cheapest power supply that they can find for their system. Now this is a big mistake because the power supply is where everything starts. A bad power supply that does not have good voltage regulation or low voltage ripples could cause damage to many components in your system. For example, the mechanical hard drive heads um, could crash if the voltage is not stable and in a worst case scenario if your power supply blows up you lose more than your power supply you might lose every single component now there are an enormous amount of options of power supply out there um, i decided to go with the power supply that's probably the best regard in the market and that's made by seasonic now seasonic used to be an oem manufacturer and they used to um, produce power supplies for many other um, companies and like Corsair for example just um, has Seasonic make their power supplies and then slaps the Corsair label on it. However, um, Seasonic has recently started making their own power supplies. That's a good thing because um, you have the Seasonic brand there. So I've decided to go with the Seasonic 550 watt gold power supply. Now the gold refers to the efficiency. The highest efficiency rating is platinum. Then you get down to gold and then to bronze. So I've decided to go with gold to keep it running cool and to save on the electricity bill. Another thing you want to consider when you're looking for a power supply is how much power do you really need? Well, most people generally overestimate the power that they need. A home computer running um, general daily tasks probably doesn't need any more than three to 400 watts typically. And you can look around um, on the tech websites where they have actually done a survey or, or rather a um, experiments on their own and found that you know most people generally overestimate their power supply needs for my system i'm using a 550 watt power supply because i will be overclocking so i do need that um, extra bit of headroom but even then i think i will be running in pretty fairly safe territory with a 550 watt power supply so if you are thinking about spending more money on a higher wattage power supply i encourage you to explore your options and perhaps look for a power supply that's of a lower power rating but perhaps greater efficiency and better reliability having decided on the power rating of the power supply that you'll be using the next question you want to ask yourself is whether or not you need a modular cabling system now a modular cabling system is simply a cable system where the cables are not hardwired to the power supply so that you can connect only the cables that you need to the power supply and leave the rest out. Now this will allow for a more neat cabling system but it does not affect the performance of the power supply. And finally the third thing you probably want to look at is the capacitors on the power supply. Now there are a lot of capacitors out there that power supply manufacturers use. Most of the lower end power supplies use capacitors from China um, and medium range they probably use TPO capacitors from Taiwan which are not the greatest um, but high-end power supplies like the Seasonics generally use Japanese capacitors and that's what you want to look at you want to look at the Japanese capacitors that have 105 degrees Celsius rating that means that they can operate up to that temperature without any damage being done to the capacitors a note about looking at reviews for power supplies there are a lot of reviews on power supplies there out there that are really not reliable so you want to make sure you go to a reliable source when you're looking at a power supply review the two best sources um, for power supplies that i found out there are at johnny guru and hardware secrets the links to which are put in the description below because testing a power supply does require some pretty high-end equipment and you need to know how to do it right so if you go to those uh, review sites they will show you the tear down of the power supplies they'll take a look at the type of capacitors that are being used in the power supplies as well as doing voltage uh, ripple testing and to see whether the power supplies can actually provide the power that they claim on the packaging of the power supply so do look into that before you go out shopping for your power supplies so hopefully the tips that i've given you in this video will help you better choose your next power supply don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe for more updates. This video was a video in the series on how you can build your own Hackintosh Pro, so don't forget to check out the playlist if you'd like to know how to put together your own Hackintosh and install OSX from your own custom components. Until then, this is Mac Geek Alex signing out.